Hi, welcome to my video where we are going to be factoring perfect square trinomials. Um, the trinomials that we're going to be looking at today are a special situation. You would factor them the same way you would factor other trinomials, but if you find that a trinomial has to, happens to be a perfect square trinomial, then we can actually factor it very quickly following these steps. So I'm going to guide you through my notes today on how to factor and then how to solve. So we're going to do both here today. First of all, a perfect square. If I said to you, what is a perfect square? A perfect square is a value that you can actually take the square root of. So for example, 25 is a perfect square. Um, 36 is a perfect square because the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 36 is 6. x squared is a perfect square. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of y to the fourth would be y squared. The square root of 25x squared would be 5x, okay? So you can always, if you can find the square root of something, that means that that value is a perfect square. So a perfect square trinomial comes from two binomials of the identical same values, x plus 5 and x plus 5, actually being multiplied together to get the result. If I gave you this square and I said to do x plus 5 times x plus 5, we would write it like this, x plus 5 times x plus 5. And we know from our multiplying binomials lesson that we would then distribute. So x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x. Five, 5 times x is 5x. Five, and 5 times 5 is 25. We would then combine like terms and we would get this trinomial, x squared plus 10x plus 25. What I'm here to explain to you today is this trinomial, x squared plus 10x plus 25, is what's called a perfect square trinomial. It's because it's made of the same value, x plus 5, squared. So the square root of this trinomial is actually x plus 5, because x plus 5 times x plus 5 would give me this result. Same thing if I gave you x minus 6. So if I showed you this <coughs> square, that was x minus 6, x minus 6, and we were to find the area of that square. We would say x minus 6 times x minus 6. x times x is x squared. x times negative 6, negative 6x. Negative 6 times x, another negative 6x. Negative 6 times negative 6, positive 36. And if I combine like terms, this would be my trinomial. This is a perfect square trinomial because it is x minus 6 squared. It is the same binomial multiplied by itself, gives me this perfect square. Now, the patterns that I want us to be able to see are from the trinomial here and what it is as the square root, what it would be in factored form. So if I wanted to go from x squared plus 10x plus 25, what I really need to see is the first term is a perfect square, yes, the last term is a perfect square. Yes. I would take the square root of x squared, which is x. I'm going to write this out for us. Okay. So I would take the square root of the first term, which is x. I would take the square root of the last term, which is 5. You would multiply those together, 5x, and then double it. If you double it and you get the middle term, then it's a perfect square trinomial. And this is actually what it would be factored x plus 5 squared. So the same thing happens here. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 36 is 6. If I multiply these two together and then I double it, x times 6 is 6x. If I double it, I get 12x. Then my factored form is x, whatever this sign is, squared. That's actually what happened here. It's x whatever this sign is, so a plus sign, squared. And if I follow that format, it's very quick to just bring me right back to what we already knew it was going to be. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, so we're gonna try some practice now. So first we have to figure out whether or not this is in fact a perfect square trinomial, and then if it is, we have to be able to factor it. So here's how we check. We take the square root of the first term, x, we take the square root of the last term, 8. We multiply them together and then double it. And if we get the middle term, this is a factor, a perfect square trinomial. 
x times 8 is 8x. What do you get when you multiply 8 times x and then double it? 16x. So that's the check. Now that it is, the way we factor it is it's the square root of the first term, x, the sine of the middle term, and then the square root of the last term. So this trinomial is 8x plus 8. So we are checking. We're going to take the square root of the first term, x, square root of my last term, 7. Then we check. x times 7 is 7x. And if I double it, do I get the middle term? The answer is yes. So factored form would be x sine of the middle term, square root of the last term. And that's my factored form, x minus 7 squared. Same thing here. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 100 is 10. If I multiply x times 10 and then I double it, I get 20x. So my factored form is x plus 10 squared. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 4 is 2. x times 2 is 2x. Double it, I get 4x. So it's x, sine of the middle term, square root of the last term, x minus 2 squared. So I hope you see that pattern right now. Next set. This should say x, so I'm just going to change that. Square root of uh, 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 1 is 1. 3x times 1 is 3x. Double it, I get 6x. So my factored form is 3x, sine of the middle term, square root of the last term. Square root of the first term, 2x. Square root of the last term, 5. 2x times 5 is 10x. 10x doubled would be 20x. Sign of the middle term, square root of the last term. We're almost done. Now, square root of the, last, the first term, 4x. Square root of the last term, 3. Multiply them together, 12x. Double it, I get 24x. Again, it works. 4x squared, I'm sorry, 4x plus 3 squared. Square root of 49x squared is 7x. Square root of 16 is 4. 7x times 4 is 28x. 28x doubled is 56x. So it's 7x minus 4 squared. Again, notice that I keep taking the sign of whatever the middle term is. Okay, so if it's plus, then it's plus. If it's minus, then it's minus. Last two. Square root of the first term is 5x. Square root of the last term is 4. Now notice, if I multiply these together, I get 20x. And if I double it, I should be getting 40x. I don't see 40x here. So it actually doesn't fit that pattern. This would be an example of a trinomial that's just clearly not a perfect square trinomial. I might be able to factor it. Probably not. Um, but I wouldn't be able to factor it in this quick form, in this pattern. Last one. Square root of 16x squared is 4x. Square root of 81y squared is 9y. If I multiply them together, I get 36xy. Double it, I get that 72xy. Perfect. Okay, last thing that we're going to be taking a look at is solving the perfect square trinomial equations. Okay, same idea. Step one, set the equation equal to zero. Step two, factor. Step three, set each factor equal to zero and solve. So these are all going to be perfect square trinomials. We are going to factor them in that quick way that we learned how to factor and then do our solving. x squared plus 8x plus 16. Square root of x squared is x. Square root of four, 16 is 4. x times 4 doubled gives me that 8x, so I know I can factor it in that form. So this becomes x plus 4 squared equals 0. Now, x plus 4 squared means x plus 4 times x plus 4. I wouldn't need to set both equal to 0 because they're the exact same value. So if I just set that one, x plus 4 equal to 0, that's my solution, just negative 4. That's it. Next one, set the equation equal to 0. I do have to do that here. So I'm going to add that one over to the other side. 
square root of x squared is x, square root of 1 is 1. If I multiply those together and double it, I get 2x. Let's take the sign of the middle term. So x minus 1 squared, set x minus 1 equal to 0, and that is our solution of 1. Again, we took the square root of the first term, square root of the last term, sign of the middle. Square root of the first term, square root of the last term, sign of the middle. Okay. Definitely need to set both of these equal to zero. We always send everything to the side of the higher exponent as long as the leading coefficient is positive. So here this is going to look like 9x squared minus 12x plus 4 equals zero. Square root of 9x squared is 3x. Square root of 4 is 2. Take the sign of the middle term. Set 3x minus 2 equal to 0. Add 2, divide by 3, and we get 2 thirds. Last problem. I know I'm going pretty quickly, but you can always pause. Last problem. 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. So I'm setting my equation equal to 0. Square root of the first term, 2x. Square root of the last term, 1. Sign to the middle term. Okay, because if I take the square root and square root and I multiply them together and double it, I do get that middle term. And then set 2x minus 1 equal to 0, add 1, divide by 2, and I get my solution. I hope this video was helpful for you, and I hope you use my other factoring videos for help. Bye.